Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to present uh, the paper, uh, Kolmogorov Complexity Characterizes Statistical Zero Knowledge. This is joint work with Eric Allender and Shuichi Hirahara. So overview, we'll go over the preliminaries, then the main results, followed by the proof sketches, and then on to the discussion section. Information in a string. Consider the following two four numbers. On the left, there is 987654321. And on the right, we have this strange looking number 8597426103. The question is, which of these two phone numbers is easier to recall? Right? You expect that the number on the left, because it has a clear pattern, is easier for us to remember, as opposed to the number on the right, which looks kind of random. And that's basically the point of what how much information a string contains. So we look at the string on the left and it has lesser information and hence it's easier for us to remember as opposed to the string on the right. To formalize this notion, we have Kolmogorov complexity. The Kolmogorov complexity of a string X is essentially the size of the smallest program description pi that uh, is such that the universal Turing machine U on this program description outputs X, right? So we consider a fixed universal Turing machine U throughout the course of this talk and our paper. And so the output U on pi is a well-defined output. The computational complexity of establishing the Kolmogorov complexity of a given string X is uncomputable. And this is why various resource bounded notions of Kolmogorov complexity are considered. And because they are bounded in resources, these versions of Kolmogorov complexity are actually computable, um, computable uh, problems. Next, languages versus promise problems. Well, all of us know that languages have a bunch of yes instances and a disjoint bunch of no instances. Well, promise problems are very similar, except that they have yes instances, a disjoint bunch of no instances, and they also have a set of don't care instances, which we don't care about, right? So a promise problem A is a pair of disjoint sets of yes and no instances. A don't care instance of A is any string that is not a yes or a no instance. So a language can be looked at as a promise problem that has no don't care instances. What is the solution to a promise problem? Well, any set B such that the yes instances of A are contained in B and the no instances of A are contained in the complement of B is a solution to a given promise problem A. Right. So for a fixed promise problem, we can think of lots of solutions um, which play around with the fate of the don't care instances. Moving on. So the promise problem of interest to us is the promise version of K complexity, which we will denote using RK. So the inputs here are consider Y of length M. The yes instances of RK have K complexity at least half the length of the string. The no versions of RK have K complexity at most half the length of the string, but also with a subtracted error function, which would think of something like log square M. So the no instances have K, co K complexity at most M over two minus log squared M, where E is the approximation error function. And for the course of the talk, you can consider E of M to be theta of log squared m. Our results hold for all E of m satisfying E is at least omega log m and at most some sub polynomial. So this is the promise problem that we consider. Next, we look at randomized reductions. So randomized reductions generalize the notion of a deterministic reduction. Valiant and Vazirani showed that SAT reduces to unique SAT under randomized reductions. Further, variance of 
minimum circuit size problem and minimum Kolmogorov time problem have been shown to be NP complete under randomized reductions, whereas the same is not known for deterministic reductions. In fact, there are results showing that if MCSP is shown to be NP complete under deterministic reductions, there are significant complexity uh, breakthroughs. So for the time being, we just have to uh, get, be satisfied with this notion of NP completeness under randomized reductions. So what does a randomized reduction look like? So consider two promise problems, A and B, and let's look at the RP many one reduction from A to B, right? So on the left, you have a yes instance, don't care instance, and no instances of A. And let M represent the reduction, RPM, RP many one reduction from A to B, right? So M takes as input the instance X, and it takes some random string R, Observe that the output m of xr is now a distribution and not just a single string. What uh, is the fate of the distribution? Well, on the yes instances, we require that this distribution has probability mass at least theta, uh, resulting in yes instances of b, with probability mass at most epsilon and 1 minus theta minus epsilon. This may map to no or don't care instances of B. For the no instance of A, we need that with probability one, M of XR is also a no instance of B, right? So this is what uh, RP many one reduction looks like. Here we have a definition of RP many one reduction. Well, A is RP many one redu reducible to B with threshold theta. If there is a polynomial time during machine M satisfying the requirement of the reduction as we have just seen. So yes instances map to yes instances with probability at least theta. No instances map to no instances with probability one, right? And here we consider theta to be uh, one minus one over n to the omega one. So really theta is very, very close to one. Observe that the error in the reduction is one minus theta. And in this case, it's clear that this error is very small. Similarly, we also have what is called a BPP many one reduction from A to B. For a BPP many one reduction from A to B, for both the yes and no instances, the constraints are the same. The reduction M of XR should result in a yes instance for a yes instance with probability at least theta. Similarly, on a no instance, you should generate a no instance of B with probability at least theta and some small amount of mass on the wrongly generated um, outputs. Again, we look at the definition of BBP many one reductions and it's the same idea. A yes instance maps, a yes instance of A maps to a yes instance of P with probability at least theta. A no instance of A maps to a no instance of P with probability at least theta. Okay. Now we come to statistical zero knowledge. So in regard, uh, when we try to understand this class statistical zero knowledge, we are going to not care too much about the main definition itself. Instead, we will look at this complexity class from the viewpoint of its complete problems. But for the sake of uh, completion, uh, uh, to help a little bit with understanding what this class is, we have given a slide uh, dedicated to the definition. So consider an all powerful, all, all powerful prover P and a randomized polynomial time machine V and another randomized polynomial time machine, machine S, which represent the verifier and the simulator, right? So we have a prover, a verifier and a simulator with these restrictions. A language L or a promise problem P is in SCK if, well, on a given input, whether X is in L, is determined by looking at whether or not the verifier accepts X with high probability based on a transcript that the prover and the verifier share. So prover and verifier interact on this input X and some shared randomness, and the transcript of it is fed to the verifier, which has to accept or reject based on whether X is in the language. As for the zero knowledge part, 
For only those instances where X is in the language, we require that the output of the simulator denoted by S of X R prime is statistically close to the transcript PV of XR that the prover and verifier interact. Right, so these two distributions are required to be statistically close for the case when X is in L. And that uh, is what the zero knowledge guarantee for L looks like. We'll also consider circuits that encode distributions. How does a circuit encode a distribution? Well, consider a circuit that takes N bits of input and prints out N bits of output based on some computation. We observe that on the uniform distribution on M bits, C outputs a probability distribution on zero one to the N, right? So you feed in uniform bits and you're going to get some probability distribution on zero one to the N. We are going to use C to denote this probability distribution as well as the circuit itself. So a circuit in our heads also represents a distribution. What is a distribution? Whatever is the distribution that is output on the uniform bits. All right, so now we come to a complete problem for SCK. Statistical difference is a complete problem for SCK and it's the following promise problem. So the yes instances of SD have a tuple C and D such that the statistical distance between the distributions C and D is at least two thirds. The no instances of ST are tuples C and D such that the statistical distance between C and D is at most one third. Okay, and we note that ST is complete for SCK under polynomial time many one reductions. Uh, SD is also shown to be complete for SDK under the more restrictive AC0 many one reductions and projection reductions. So statistical zero knowledge to us is basically this promise problem statistical difference. Non-interactive statistical zero knowledge, NISEK, as the name suggests, these protocols are essentially the same as SDK protocols with the additional restriction that the verifier must accept or reject based on just a single message from the prover. So there is no interaction between the prover and the verifier and the decision must be made just based on what the prover sends to the verifier. Everything else remains the same. To identify NISCK, we also look at a complete two complete problems for NISCK. The first one of which is called the entropy approximation problem. So here, consider a circuit C that takes M bits of input and, and outputs N bits. We identify with C also this probability distribution on zero one to the N. EA is the promise problem such that on yes instances, you have tuples C and K. So C represents a probability distribution. K is some threshold. So a yes instances, a yes instance satisfies that the entropy of C is at least K plus one. By entropy of C, we refer to the entropy of the probability distribution that C entails. Similarly, a no instance of EA has triple CK such that the entropy of X, which is the same as C, uh, the probability distribution has entropy at most K minus one, right? So entropy approximation. C is the circuit whose entropy we are trying to approximate and K is the threshold which we are going to either consider greater than K plus one or less than K minus one as our actual thresholds for the entropy, right? And EA is complete for NISEK under polynomial time many one reductions. It's also con complete for NISEK under AC zero many one reductions and projection reductions. So EA represents NISEK to us. We have another problem called the support size problem which is also complete for NISEK under polynomial time many one reductions. What is the support size problem? Well, here we are given a circuit C and a, an integer S. The yes instances satisfy that the output of the circuit is very close to the uniform distribution on N bits, right? So outputs of C have to be close to uniform distribution on N bits with a statistical distance of at most two to the negative S. The no instances of support size have CS such that the size of the support of the distribution is at most 
2 to the n minus s. Right? To visualize this, we look at this diagram where on the left, we have a yes instance of support size. Observe that the data uh, that the probability mass is spread almost uniformly over most of the sample space. Whereas for a no instance on the right, observe that all of the probability mass is concentrated on a very small region of the sample space. So essentially the yes instances look like the uniform distribution and the no instances look very, very far from the uniform distribution. Okay, so what do we know about SEK and NISEK? Well, SEK is not known to be contained in NP. Non-triviality of SEK and NISEK. Goldreich, Sahai, and Vadhan prove that SEK is not equal to promise BPP if and only if NISEK is not equal to promise BPP. So promise BPP is this class of promise problems which have BPP type guarantees on the yes and no instances. And SEK and NISEK are either both strong or both weak according to this result. Here is a diagram and we observe that SEK and NP, there's no clear relationship. SEK obviously contains NISEK and co-NISEK and that's where we stand. So what can we say about SEK and meta complexity? Well, there is a shared history between these two notions. Um, we have the paper from Allender and Das, which shows that MKTP and MCSP are hard for SEK under BPP Turing reductions. So these are hard problems for SEK. We also have this result that says that MKTP is hard for co-NI SEK under P poly many one reductions. This is a result due to Allender, Gower, Hirahara and Robel. Further, we also have this result by Sachs and Santanam that says that for any decidable promise problem L, if there is a BPP many one reduction from L to RK, recall that RK is this promise, promise version of K complexity, then L is in SCK. So they give an upper bound on problems that reduce to this uh, approximate version of K complexity. Reductions to RK. So previous attempts to characterize complexity classes in terms of reductions to RK have been unsuccessful. There have been successful attempts in either establishing hardness of problems reducing to RK as in the AGHR paper or in providing an upper bound on the problems reducing to RK as in the Sachs and Santanam paper. Our work has been successful in actually establishing a characterization of problems that reduce to RK. So what is our main result? Our main result is a characterization for NISCK. For any decidable promise problem A, we are able to show that A is in NISCK if and only if there is a RP many one reduction from A to the promise problem RK. Right? And what is the proof idea? Well, in one direction, we need to first show that NISEK has an RP many one reduction to RK. In order to do this, we observe that it suffices to prove that entropy approximation, which is complete for NISEK, has such a reduction. So on the left, we have problem that deals with entropies of circuits. And we are able to show that if a circuit has high output entropy, then they usually print out strings of high K complexity. Whereas if a circuit has a small output support size, it always prints out strings of low K complexity, right? And that's what we see playing out on this slide here. So we look at this polynomially many outputs from the circuit C under different random seeds. What AGHR show is that if C has high entropy, then with high probability, the KT complexity of Y is higher than some threshold. They also show that if C has a low support size to start with, then the KT complexity of the output concatenated output Y has some other threshold as an upper bound. And this threshold is smaller than the previous threshold, right? So because there is a gap, 
we are able to separate the yes instances from the no instances based on these upper and lower bounds respectively. We show that the same argument goes through for k complexity instead of kt complexity. So this establishes the first half of the reduction, uh, first half of the statement, which is a reduction from NISZK to RK, um, an RP many one reduction. What about the other direction? Well, now we need to show that there is an NISZK upper bound for problems, promise problems that have an RP many one reduction to the set RK. Right. And in order to show this, we look at the reduction from A to RK. Let M represent the RP many one reduction from A to RK for some promise problem A, such that M of XR is the query that is generated by this reduction um, when we are considering X belonging to uh, the language, uh, to the promise problem A. Right. So the main point is that this distribution, M of XR, has low entropy if X was a no instance for A, and it has high entropy if X is a yes instance for A. So you start with a yes instance and the reduction generates a distribution that has high entropy. If you start with a no instance, the distribution, uh, the reduction generates a distribution which has low entropy. And the separation of entropy in this yes and no cases is basically what leads to an NISCK protocol. And this protocol helps us resolve A via this reduction to the promise problem RK. Recall that entropy approximation is the problem that deals with separating uh, entropies of a given circuit, uh, a, a given probability distribution, and that is what resolves this issue here. This proof is due to Sachs and Santanam, who provide an SEK upper bound, but we observe that NISEK suffices to resolve this problem. Moving on, we also have a characterization for statistical zero knowledge theorem. For any decidable promise problem A, we show that A is an SDK if and only if A has a BPP Boolean formula reduction to RK. So these are probabilistic reductions, which generalize the notion of non-adaptive truth table reductions. That is, the reduction can make multiple queries and also perform some computation on the results of these queries. So these are more powerful reductions than BPP many one reductions, which could only result in one query um, per input. So now we also have some results on the log space version of these classes. So consider an all powerful prover P as before. The verifier and simulator now are restricted to being randomized log space during machines. Again, we identify SCKL and NISCKL with the uh, complete problems for these classes, statistical difference, uh, statistical difference on NC0 circuits or entropy approximation on NC0 circuits or branching programs. And the reductions that we consider now are either projections or a projection many one reductions or log space many one reductions. We also have the following theorem that for any decidable promise problem A, A is an NISCKL if and only if there are these restricted reductions like uh, a BP NC0 many one reduction from A to RK or an RL many one reduction from A to RK and others. Similarly, we also give a characterization for SCKL. So for any decidable promise problem A, A is an SCKL if and only if A has a log space Boolean formula reduction to statistical difference restricted to NC0 circuits, or A has a BPL uh, Boolean formula reduction to RK. So this is a characterization for the complexity class SCKL. Finally, we come to the discussion points of discussion. So the first point of discussion is NISCK versus NISCKL. So a fact, there are not many uh, examples of natural computation problems that are known or conjectured to lie outside of P, where the class of problems reducible to them via polynomial time many one reductions or log space many one reductions differ. 
So most of the natural computations pro computation problems we have are such that both these classes under different reductions look similar. So a question is, is it the case that the problems reducible to RK via RP many one reductions and RL many one reductions? Do these problems differ? Or should this be taken as evidence that NISCK and NISCKL coincide? So that's the first point of discussion is to check if NISCK is the same as NISCKL. And we hope that our reductions uh, shed some light on answering this question. The next point for us is to consider reductions to exact K complexity versus approximate K complexity. So here's a fact, no complexity class larger than NISCKL is known to be AC0 many one reducible to the exact Kolmogorov complexity function. So what conclusion can we draw from our results? Our results show that when the reductions are considered to an approximation of the Kolmogorov complexity function, then NISCKL is essentially optimal. Right. So if we look at the uh, reductions to the approximate, we have shown that NISZKL is the complexity class that is characterized by these reductions. And so now it remains to uh, figure out what can be said about reductions to the exact K complexity function. Does it increase the complexity class size or does it change the complexity class or are we still in NISZK restricted to L? So that's another point of discussion. And the final point of discussion is we suggest a potential avenue for attack on the NP versus NL problem, right? So let's start with the fact, the minimum Kolmogorov time problem, the problem of computing KT complexity lies in NP and it is hard for co-NISCKL under non-uniform projections. What is the attack that we suggest? If MKTP is in NISCKL, then there must be a non-uniform projection that takes strings of low KT complexity and hence low K complexity and maps them to strings of high K complexity. And simultaneously, it also maps strings of high KT complexity to strings of low K complexity, right? So observe that this non-uniform projection seems to be taking low K complex strings to high K complex strings and simultaneously mapping high KT complex strings to strings of low K complexity, right? And this sounds a little bit like uh, a machine that is turning milk to water and water to milk, which we find is probably unlikely. And so the potential conclusion that we can draw is, it is possible that one could show unconditionally that such a projection does not exist. Among other things, this would separate NP from the class debt, where debt is a complexity class that contains NL and it contains all problems that reduce to computing the determinant. Right. So if we could show that such a projection does not exist, then we are able to separate NP from NL. And this is a potential avenue for attack on the problem. We hope that our paper helps uh, strengthen the attacks on such a uh, question. And finally, thanks for listening to the talk and 